Hey, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. So I want to do an episode today on different ways that you can work from home as a developer. This is something I've been doing. I've been freelancing for about 14 years, but I've been working from home uh, full-time for about eight. Uh, I actually have a brother of mine who also works from home in a very different way than, than I do. And I have a mentor of mine who also has been working from home for probably over a decade and a half or more and does that in a completely different way than uh, my brother and I do. So I've been exposed to a lot of different ways that you can work from home as a developer. And so I wanted to go through those and maybe give you some ideas on different ways that you could approach it. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into this. So the first way you can work from home as a developer is the most obvious, which is to simply get a remote job. And there are plenty of remote jobs out there. And that number seems to be growing. More and more companies are becoming open to the idea of doing remote work and so forth. And I think that's just going to continue. So with time, there will be more of these jobs. There will be more of an opportunity here. But of course, that's sort of the obvious one. Um, but I do want to give you sort of a, a pro tip with this, and that is that most job sites and search engines will actually let you enter the, the word remote or something related to that as the location. So you can hone in and only search for those jobs. And to give you an example of that, this is from indeed.com and you can see I've done a search for just Python and uh, in the where sort of block here I put remote and then if you look through the listings you'll see some of them say remote and some of them say home bit home based and so when you're on these job sites and you're looking through different jobs try to get a sense of how they they ca categorize or how they what keywords they use to describe these work from home home based jobs and then use those in that where blocker in that location area and a lot of the search engines will let you do that and then you're not sifting through thousands of jobs that are all confined to a location you can actually hone in on the ones that are remote or home based so it's a little bit of a pro tip for how to actually search those and again a lot of a lot of the search engines will let you do that indeed of course the largest one does as well all right so that's the first one the obvious one second one then maybe a little obvious too but is definitely one of the options which is to freelance so you just offer simple services to people who pay you to do it for them a lot of times this is a convenience thing they're, they're busy or they just don't want to do it or they don't know how to do it etc and they'll pay you to do it for them and people will pay for all kinds of crazy things so I, I like to always bring up examples when I say that another one that I found uh, is p potato parcel so this is a service uh, and they will send a potato with a message written on it whatever message you want in black marker and they'll write the message on it they'll uh, box it up and they'll ship it to, to wherever you want. Uh, and that business is a six-figure business and growing. So again, uh, it's not exactly 100% freelance, but it just gives you a sense of some of the crazy things that people will pay money for. And that business, again, is a six-figure business. So in freelancing, you can use sites like Upwork or Freelancer, Fiverr, or TopTal, or you can use your own website to find uh, and get clients. So there are platforms and there's help out there for you to to uh, be able to more easily find clients and so forth. You don't just have to go out and start networking and all that stuff. You can certainly do that, but there's a lot more these days to help you get going with freelancing. Now, uh, again, pro tip here, if you really want true control of this, then really take the approach and the mindset of setting out to build a full business around your services. Now, I, I find a lot of times, because I talk a lot about freelancing, a lot of people tend to get focused in on, well, I'm just going to go over on Upwork, or I'm just going to go over on Freelance, or I'm going to just go over on Fiverr, and I'm going to try and build my entire business around that site. And you certainly can have success on those sites, and people have had success doing that, but you're really sort of beholden to those sites or to those platforms. And so... It's not that you don't use those platforms, but you should always think of those as sort of a stepping stone and you should always take the approach of building a full business around your services and getting into creating content and tra getting traffic to your own website and so forth. You just don't want to rely on any one platform or approach. You want to own the the entire thing, the entire process uh, and have full control over it. So that's going to give you a lot more peace of mind in the long run and really uh, allow you to, to make more, work less, etc. Now, as an inside here, 
I, uh, my new beginner's guide to freelance course will show you how to do that. That's exactly what the course is aimed at doing is showing you how to build a full real business around your freelance services, sort of the macro steps to take to get started and then to build it and grow it from there over the next year, two years, three years, five years, uh, et cetera. So if you want sort of a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a, a business and, and build a real freelance business, uh, then that's the course you want to take. You can get access to it for nothing over on Skillshare. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash freelance and you'll get all the details on how to get access to that course for nothing. All right, that's freelancing. Next is consulting. So here is where you can actually, you learn some sort of in-demand tech. Generally, you're going to want to pick something that big companies uh, are using you get really good at it and then these companies will pay you to come in and consult I mean you have people who will consult on things like Microsoft products uh, you know there there's all sorts of weird things that are out there my little brother he's a six-figure consultant he works with billion dollar companies like Nike and CVS and Office Depot and all these all these big brands that you could think of he's probably worked with them and it's it's a pretty obscure tech and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute but you probably have never heard of it. Now he does travel, uh, and he, you know, part of the job is he has to travel to meet with these clients. But he works from home. He does. He doesn't go into an office when he's not traveling, and he is home most of the year, so he doesn't travel, uh, you know, near as much as a lot of other jobs. And actually, he likes to travel. Uh, he's single and and so forth, so he he likes that part of it, and uh, he travels maybe a little more than he has to, but. Uh, he has he has pretty good control over that. So uh, it's a pretty good gig. Like I said, six-figure consultant working with these big companies. Now, like I said, the pro tip here, find an obscure tech or software that big companies use but most developers don't know. And the example I give you is the example that my little, uh, of my little brother, which is Tririga. Now, I, might, I would guess, unless you heard it from me from watching one of my other videos, you probably never heard uh, of that that technology I never had either but a lot of big companies are using it he happened to get in uh, early on when he was working with IBM and learn the technology and now that's why he consults with these companies and he can sort of uh, write his own check and in, in a lot of ways because he's very very high in demand he's one of the few people who, who in the world who knows it as well as he does so again if you can find something like that and they're definitely out there um, then you can be a really well-paid in-demand consultant and you can, you know, you'll probably have to travel as a consultant, but you'll be able to have your home base at home and, and only really travel when you want or need to. All right. The, the next one, the, the fourth one, the final one is to build an app. So start an app company. It can be, you know, phone apps, WordPress plugins, whatever. Oh, my, as an example, I talked about my mentor at the beginning. He runs a seven figure WordPress plugin business. And he's worked from home the entire time. He's run his business, the entire business from home the entire time. So uh, you can do that sort of thing. Uh, everybody on the team that he works with is remote and he just, they set up the processes and it works. And again, this could be phone apps. It could be WordPress plugins. It could be software as a service. To give you an example, some examples of each, obviously you've probably heard of Angry Birds. So that's an example of a phone app. Uh, Yoast SEO, so it's an SEO plugin for WordPress. That's a very big business in the WordPress community. Um, and then a software as a service, I would say Lead Pages is, a, is an example of something like that. So there's companies out there doing all, all of this sort of thing, and you can build an app around one of these different ways of doing it, and you can run that from home, and it's entirely possible to have a remote team uh, and do that. So pro tip here. Uh, focus on problems and not the next big thing. This is one of the things that I sort of find when I talk about building apps or building software or whatever is that a lot of people uh, sort of get focused on wanting to build the next big thing and they, they're sort of racking their brain about where's the technology going? What's this cool thing I can build? But really some of the best products out there, some of the most well-known, the ones that, that do the best are not focused on that. They're focused on uh, solving problems and and the way to do it is to find a group of people that you're already naturally passionate about and then go talk to those people get to know those people if you don't already and figure out what their most pressing problems are and then build technology to help them solve those problems that's how you're going to know that you sort of have a home run from the beginning is because you're solving a pressing problem around a group of people who you're passionate about and who are passionate about a particular topic 
Uh, and so if you can do that sort of thing, then, then uh, you're going to have a good chance at being successful uh, with your apps. So again, don't try and rack your brain trying to figure out what the next, where the technology is going and what the next big thing is. Focus on problems and solving problems with your technology. All right, so that'll do it. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so over at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. There you'll learn about all the different perks that you get access to, all of my courses and source code and so forth. So if you want access to everything that I have available and you want to support the show, you can do so at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Or you can get access to all of my courses at johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. With that link, you get a two-month free trial of Skillshare. Uh, that you can get access to. Again, johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.